Chapters eighty nine to ninety four of Tristram Shandy, Volume three. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Julie from Mulligan. The Life and Opinions of Tristram Shandy, Gentleman, Volume three, by Lawrence Stern. Chapter eighty nine. But courage, gentle reader, I scorn it. Tis enough to have thee in my power, but to make use of the advantage which a fortune of the pen has now gained over thee would be too much. No, by that all-powerful fire which warms the visionary brain and lights the spirit through unworthy tracts, ere I would force a helpless creature upon this hard service and make thee pay, poor soul. For fifty pages would I have no right to sell thee. Naked as I am, I would browse upon the mountains, and smile that the north wind brought me neither my tent or my supper. So put on, my brave boy, and make the best of thy way to Bologna. Chapter 90 Bologna Ha! So we are all got together, debtors and sinners before heaven, a jolly set of us. But I can't stay and quaff enough with you. I'm pursued myself like a hundred devils, and shall be overtaken before I can well change horses. For heaven's sake, make haste! Tis for high treason, quoth the very little man, whispering as low as he could to a very tall man that stood next him. Or else for murder, quoth the tall man. "'Well thrown, size ace,' quoth I. "'No,' quoth a third, "'the gentleman has been committing. "'Ah, ma chère fille,' said I, "'as she tripped by from her matins, "'you look as rosy as the morning, "'for the sun was rising, "'and it made the compliment the more gracious. "'No, it can't be that,' quoth the fourth. "'She made a curtsy to me. "'I kissed my hand. "'Tis dead,' continued he. "'Tis certainly for debt,' quoth the fifth. "'I would not pay that gentleman's debts,' quoth A's, "'for a thousand pounds. "'Nor would I,' quoth Size, "'for six times the sum. "'Well thrown, Size A's again,' quoth I. "'But I have no debt but the debt of nature, "'and I want but patience of her, "'and I will pay her every farthing I owe her.' "'How can you be so heart-heated, madam, to arrest a poor traveller going along without molestation to any one upon this lawful occasion? "'Do stop the death-looking, long-striding scoundrel of a scarcener who is posting after me. "'He never would have followed me but for you. "'If it be but for a stage or two, just to give me a start of him, I beseech you, madam, do, dear lady.' "'Now, in trust, there's a great pity.' goes mine Irish host, that all this good courtship should be lost, for the young gentlewoman has been after going out of hearing of it all along. Simpleton, quiz I. So you have nothing else in Boulogne worth seeing? By Jesus, there is a finer seminary for the humanities. They cannot be a finer, quiz I. Chapter 91 when the precipitancy of a man's wishes hurries on his ideas ninety times faster than the vehicle he rides in, woe be to truth, and woe be to the vehicle and its tackling, let him be made of what stuff you will, upon which he breathes forth the disappointment of his soul. As I never give general characters either of man or things in colour, the most haste, the worst speed, was all the reflection I made upon the affair. The first time it happened, the second, third, fourth, and fifth time, I confined it respectively to those times, and accordingly blamed only the second, third, fourth, and fifth postboy for it, without carrying my reflections further, but the event continuing to befall me from the fifth to the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and tenth time, and without one exception. I then could not avoid making a national reflection of it, which I do in these words. That something is always wrong in a French post chairs upon first setting out. All the proposition may stand thus. A French postilion has always to alight before he has got three hundred yards out of town. 
What's wrong now? Diable! A robe's broke, a knot has slipped, a staple's drawn, a bolt's to whittle, a tag, a rag, a jag, a strap, a buckle, or a buckle's tongue, want altering. Now, true as all this is, I never think myself empowered to excommunicate thereupon either the post chaise or its driver, nor do I take into my head to swear by the living God. I would rather go foot ten thousand times, or that I will be damned if ever I get into another. But I take the matter coolly before me, and consider that some tag, or rag, or jag, or bolt, or buckle, or buckle's tongue will ever be a-wanting, or want altering, travel where I will. So I never chaff, but take the good and the bad, as if they fall in my road and get on. Do so, my lad, said I. He had lost five minutes already, in alighting in order to get a luncheon of black bread, which he had crammed into the chaise pocket, and was remounted, and going leisurely on, to relish it the better. "'Get on, my lad,' said I, briskly, but in the most persuasive tone imaginable, for I juggled a four-and-twenty soup peas against the glass, taking care to hold the flat side towards him as he looked back. The dog grinned intelligence from his right ear to his left, and behind his sooty muzzle discovered such a pearly row of teeth that serenity would have pawned to jewels for them. Just heaven! What masticators! What bread! And so, as he finished the last mouthful of it, we entered the town of Montreuil. Chapter 92 there is not a town in all France which, in my opinion, looks better in the map than Montreux. I own it does not look so well in the book of post-roads, but when you come to see it, to be sure, it looks most pitifully. There is one thing, however, in it at present very handsome, and that is the innkeeper's daughter. She has been eighteen months at Amiens, and six at Paris, and going through her classes, so knits and sews and dances, and does the little coquetries very well. A slut! In running them over within these five minutes that I have stood looking at her, she has let fall at least a dozen loops in a white thread stocking. Yes, yes, I see you cunning gypsy. Tis long and taper. You need not pin it to your knee, and that is your own, and fit you exactly. That nature should have told this creature a word about a statue's thumb. But as if this sample is worth all their thumbs, besides, I have her thumbs and fingers in at the bargain, if they can be any guide to me, and as Jeannadon withal, for that is her name, stands so well for a drawing, may I never draw more, or rather, may I draw like a draught horse, by main strength all the days of my life if I do not draw her in all her proportions, and with as determined pencil as if I had her in the wettest drapery. But your worships, choose rather that I give you the length, breadth, and perpendicular height of the great Paris church, or drawing of the façade of the abbey of saint Austrobert, which has been transported from Artois hither. Everything is just as I suppose as the masons and carpenters left them. And if the belief in Christ continues so long, will be so these fifty years to come. So your worships and reverences may all measure them at your leisures. But he who measures thee, Jonathan, must do it now. Thou carriest the principles of change within thy frame, and considering the chances of a transitory life, I would not answer for thee a moment. Ere twice twelve months are past and gone, thou mayst grow out like a pumpkin, or lose thy shapes, or thou mayst go off like a flower, and lose thy beauty. Nay, thou mayst go off like a hussy, and lose thyself. I would not answer for my Aunt Diana, was she alive. Faith, scarce for her picture, where is but painted by Reynolds. But if I go on with my drawing, after naming that son of Apollo, I'll be shot. So you must even be content with the original, which, if the evening is fine in passing through Montreuil, you will see at your chaise door, as you change horses, 
but unless you have as bad a reason for haste as I have, you had better stop. She has a little of the devout, but that, sir, is a terse to nine in your favour. Lord help me, I could not count a single point, so I had been peaked and re-peaked and capitated to the devil. Chapter 93 All which, being considered, and the death, moreover, might be much nearer me than I imagined, I wish I was at Abbeville, goes I, were it only to see how they card and spin. So off we said. Vid, Book of French Post Roads, page 36, edition of 1762. De Montreuil à Nampon, poste et demi. De Nampon à Bernay, poste. De Bernay à Novion, poste. De Novion à Abbeville, poste. But the carders and spinners were all gone to bed. Chapter 94 What a vast advantage is travelling! Only it heats one, though there is a remedy for that, which you may pick out of the next chapter. End of chapters 89 to 94